All right, today I'm going to be playing a Patreon deck from Bob the Warrior. So this deck is a Divine Shield Recruit Paladin. To give our minions Divine Shield, we've got the new weapon Seed Cloud Buckler. We've also got Lothraxi and the Redeemed, Steward of Darkshire, and a card that I added to the deck, which is Imprisoned Celestial. Imprisoned Celestial just curves so nicely into a turn 5 stand against Darkness. And then to abuse those Divine Shields, we've got Bolvar Fireblood, a couple copies of Blood Knight, and I added a couple Rallying Blades to the deck. I was actually surprised when I was tweaking this deck just how few cards there are in Wild that care about Divine Shield. You'd think after six years or however long there'd be more Divine Shield payoff, but there really just isn't. But anyway, to abuse all those Divine Shield synergies, obviously, we need to be able to summon some minions. So we've got Stand Against Darkness, we've got Day at the Fair, Tour Guide, Lost in the Jungle. And of course, if we're a Paladin deck in Wild that cares about making dudes, we've also got Baku the Moon Eater. What if I just coin Blood Knight on turn two? Is that the play? Oh, I have so many potential Divine Shields for the Blood Knight, though. None will gotta lead the oh, why are you Pirate Warrior? Gross. Aren't you ashamed? Probably just gonna buckle that. Wow, sick opener, pirate warrior. I'm going for a nasty Blood Knight next turn. Play the Tour Guide. We make two minions. And then we need to trade this off so we can play the Blood Knight. Yes, perfect sequencing. Deal with my 2121 pirate scum. That's a really cool play you just made over there. Oh wait, I actually don't even have lethal through that. How annoying. Maybe I'll get my Oh My Yog achievement here. Okay. Kind of tempted to keep Rallying Blade, but it's not that good when I don't have Divine Shielders. Alright. Well, I have a
have a very good hand. Let's see if the opponent's also Odd Paladin. They are. I think this combo is pretty good when I'm going first, so I can just control the board the whole game. Maybe I buckler instead of stand against darkness, or instead of a celestial, uh, rather. It's basically like they come out on the same turn, but the seed cloud buckler can start smacking down one ones in the meantime. I think I like this. Turn 5 is Standing Against Darkness, and then turn 6, maybe Steward Day at the fair if I really need to. Probably won't need to, though. Uh, I'll just play a Steward here. I picked up a second one, and I have other ways to give my stuff Divine Shields anyway. So, probably just eats 3 damage and kills a 1-1. One -one. That's fine. Also puts the Worm in range of my weapon. I feel like I'm having to jump through some hoops my opponent didn't have to, to get Divine Shields on my minions. They think they're winning the board control battle, huh? They might be right, because that 1-4 is really strong. More horse trainers good into it, though. So I have Steward Day at the Fair next turn, and then I can use those Divine Shields and re-shield them with Omayog, activating the Celestial. That's a really good fungal mancer. Back to your homes. It's possible I should just play on my yog here to block my opponents like stand against darkness or something but i think the potential of redivine shielding my board is really really strong that's a lot of damage coming my way I might be dead here, but we'll see. Uh, I guess I play Barov. If I don't play Barov, if I just play Rallying Blade, then my trades are like that, that, bump, bump, bump. It's gotta be bear of.
I know some of those decks play Leroy, but that deck is playing some like kind of weird cards. Corridor Creeper, Fungal Mancer, Stonehill Defender, Raid Leader. I definitely don't think all of those are standard in Odd Paladin. So it seems unlikely that they would be playing Leroy in that deck. Um, do I want the Divine Shield on my Barov or not? I'm using up most of my Divine Shields here anyway, so even if they kill it, I don't think it's a big deal. And it might be nice for me to have access to the Death Rattle. Um, let's see. My opponent's at 19 here. I'm showing... I just have 19 with my minions. I think I'd rather start working on the Death Rattle for the Buckler. The one extra damage out of the Rallying Blade doesn't really matter at all. Nice. That was definitely a turnaround. Definitely like the turn one tour guide. None will survive. Here for the tour. Reporting for duty. Save this lost in the jungle to activate Celestial, probably. Murlocs are scary. But I think it's okay since it's turn two and I have five minions in play. The Warhorse Trainer was pretty good here, but seems really good to get the Celestial down. Those are pretty annoying, honestly. Probably have to kill them. So if my opponent deals with this board, I play Sand Against Darkness. If not, I hero power and play Lost in the Jungle. Either way, I'm in a pretty good spot. Rallying blade, huh? Alright, I dig it. Even if my opponent has, like, Volcano here, which I don't know why they would, but if they did, it's not nearly good enough. I guess what they need is, uh... Toxfin plus Firemancer Flurgle, I think it's called. That's a pretty specific combination of cards to have, though. Well, my opponent is dead here. Honor. 
Let's just go for a really aggressive tour guide opener. And surely we can do something cute with the Blood Knight this game. None will survive. Alright, there's the cute thing we're doing with Blood Knight. Maybe turn six with day at the fair. This is an interesting hand, actually. I think I like Buckler over Imprisoned Celestial here. That can die. I'm actually just gonna play a 6 6 Blood Knight here. I could, in theory, make a 21 power Blood Knight pretty easily. But uh, I think I'd rather just have a bunch of Divine Shielded 2 2s. All right. Oh, was that lethal? Damn, okay. I guess Rallying Blade did do six damage. Nice. This is an interesting hand. The Celestial's good. Day at the Fair is not the best activator for it, but it's okay. And then Blood Knight's just kind of sick. I guess I'll just full keep. Maybe I'm trying to look at a turn six. Uh, this wakes up, I play Day at the Fair and then Rallying Blade. Well, there's Oh My Yog for the Celestial. I think I'm fine just playing this here. I can still make five one ones on turn five. Well, Stand Against Darkness is seeming like the better option on that turn. I probably shouldn't have my ogged here. Should have used it to counter the swarm of 1-5s. Looks like it's okay, though.
That's pretty annoying. But my rallying blade is quite good here. Hmm, buckler, huh? I think I'm still playing rallying blade. It's insane here. Casual 21 21 Blood Knight. Oh, they just concede to that. Sure. I'll take it. Alright, so I've played 21 games with this deck, and I went 15 and 6. So it does seem to be performing pretty well. I did seem to pretty consistently hit the Celestial or Buckler setups. And it turns out a Swarm of Divine Shield minions is reasonably strong at just winning games. I will say, though, that all things considered, the payoff cards for Divine Shields, the Bulvar and the Blood Knights, and arguably even the Rallying Blade, didn't really pull their weight, I think. I think this deck was pretty much winning just off the back of being Odd Paladin. And then, like, the Divine Shields were pretty good, too. But for the most part, I think to make improvements to this deck, you just pull up a more standard Odd Paladin list and just start turning this deck into that. So yeah, I don't really think the Divine Shield build has much merit over deck lists that already exist. And I don't think there's too much room to improve this list without just making that change. The only thing that really stands out is that we are not playing muster for battle. But it's a little bit weird to play it, and we have double rallying blade and double buckler. 